Hey there, Dan, the culinary libertarian here. We, me, are making a new kind of focaccia, which is new to me, not new to the planet, called focaccia alla genovese. This is mostly because my friend in Torino, Elvira, was complaining, remarking, she was complaining, that the focaccia I made oh, 10 days or so ago wasn't what she thought of as focaccia. So uh, that's fine. Uh, kind of like minestrone soup. How many ways are there to make minestrone soup? Well, how many cooks are there to make it? There's lots of ways, just like there's lots of ways to make focaccia. So I found a focaccia alla genovese recipe. I've just made it. One of the significant differences between this and the focaccia I made last week is the dough is stiffer, closer to a standard kind of a bread dough. If you'll remember the last one, it was, sorry for the noise, it was a very sticky, runny, pouring kind of a dough. The This dough, hang on, we need one of these, it's still dough, does have some of it owe its own identity. It's also very sticky still. That's what we want from the focaccia. That's how we're going to get those big holes inside. That's the yumminess. So it's going into an oiled bowl. There we go. The fermentation process for this is shorter than for the focaccia I made last time. That was on the pan, pulling, folding in the garage, the cooler, for a day, come back to it again. So it was a it could be less than a three-day process. I was maximizing the time to get the most out of the yeast production. One of the things that bakers do with their ingredients and time is, is an ingredient. It's a thing that's there. Heat and time are two ingredients that we don't talk about on the paper, but they have a huge impact on the final product. The longer you can make a dough wait, for baking, the more flavor will be developed in the dough. Now, we eat food for a variety of reasons, not least of which is flavor. It needs to taste good. One of the ways I'm making this one taste good with a shorter fermentation time is I adapted the recipe to include some of that sourdough starter we had, the thing I called the chef. This has a little bit in there. So it's going to help bring some of that sourdough tartness to a bread that we like to have. Uh, a good sourdough bread also has a different kind of a mouth feel to it. Uh, it has a velvetiness or a silkiness that isn't present in straight doughs, uh, and that's something that I like as well. So this one's going to be at least today, possibly tomorrow, just to see what I can do playing with time because that's what I do. Um, but this is going to be fun to do. I'm going to make it a, a bit bigger in the pan than last time, which is an amendment I made to the other focaccia recipe. I half again the size of the dough so that I get a thicker, bigger piece because uh, if you're the kind of person who likes to make sandwiches by cutting the piece of focaccia in half, the one I made on my little quarter sheet pan tasted great. Everything about it was what it was supposed to be, except it wasn't quite sandwich ready. So that's an easy thing to fix, make more dough. So we're gonna take a look at this and have sandwiches. When hey there, okay, so it's been a couple of hours. The focaccia is nice and proof, big, airy, ready to go. So there is the focaccia, and there is the marjoram. There's my knife. And what we're going to do is sprinkle the marjoram and some salt and pepper and, and oil, and with a pushing technique, push it all into the dough. All right, so focaccia dough, ready to get drizzled. I'm using this olive oil. 
I read a book about real food, fake food, which is reviewed on the blog. And what they do to olive oil is sort of a shame and surprising and sad. So I'm using the good stuff and read the book, find out why it's the good stuff. This is the marjoram. Yes, Elvira, I know this is not true focaccia alla Genovese, but it's mine, not yours, so that's what we're doing. Olive oil, marjoram, pistol salt. I kind of like the crunch of a big chunk of salt, and, and a little bit of salt and a big amount of bread is a good balance. And then pepper. Now here's the working part just you're making dimples not really pushing holes into the bread and that's it now the oven just got done it's gonna go in the oven uh, I have it set at 425 I like to bake even in a sheet pan on a stone to get that real quick conduction of heat on the pan probably 25 minutes because it's a little extra thick uh, and then we'll look at it when it comes out. So, it's time to look at the focaccia. There it is. As you can see, we have a mouse of substantial size. It might be an R-O-U-S. However, that will not deter us from taking a look at this baby so uh, in fairness I've actually loosened this before to do like this so that way all right so making a mess move this over here all right so one of the things we saw in last week's focaccia was a inconsistent air bubble size. Some big ones, some small ones. The crumb was not a consistent shaped crumb. And that's kind of the thing that I'm looking for out of a focaccia. That's also, also the thing you're looking for from a good French baguette. Various sized holes when you get into a crumb that has more consistent holes a lot like the bread you buy at the grocery store that isn't inherently a bad thing it just means something about the bread allowed the uniformity to come through as opposed to the disparity of uh, air hole sizes so what we've got here is some uniformity. Now, in addition, the contrast is that we have every once in a while, like this guy, a big bubble, a little one over here, but for the most part, it is a different crumb, and the primary reason for that is this dough was turned into bread in just a few hours. The focaccia last time was a three-day affair, and in those three days, we have the sourdough starter, the chef, working in here making more sourdough. And that, there's a lot going on in there, but that prolonged yeast growth and fermentation causes that difference in air hole size, that difference in crumb. Um, in addition to that, it's safe to say that generally the case will be that a bread with various sized holes in the crumb will have a more sourdoughy flavor than a quicker bread. There are exceptions to everything just like for bread, but if we want to be safe, we can say that's probably mostly true. So that's our focaccia genovese. It's pretty good. Elvira, I gotta tell you, I like the other one more. But, hope you're happy. Enjoy. Mangia bene.